Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, just doing a quick video going over the full patch notes for Dawn Trail. Now I say quick because there aren't really a substantial number of changes between the preliminary patch notes and the full patch notes. However, there are some things that we were looking for in the prelims that weren't there and some things that I wasn't expecting. So for the full patch notes, there's really four major things to take note of. First and most obvious is resolved issues and uh, known issues. Now for resolved issues, there's some pretty funny stuff in here as there normally are. But for the most part, it's just things that we already had. A, a lot of these I never encountered in the first place. Uh, honestly, when I saw this one, the third boss battle in another Alola Island, I was like, oh, are they finally fixing the hitbox on the wall? No. <laughs> No, it was it was the cover action thing with Paladin. Uh, but there's just a few basic things in here. This isn't really going to be a major change of anything that you are going to do if you've had any of these issues before. So be it. The Xbox players, keyboard inputs would no longer register when controller connection was lost on Xbox. That's a pretty important one, especially for a console player. As well as some other stuff of fixing materia. Scroll bar of the materia melding window would reset or these hotbar and cross hotbar enemy sign text commands not functioning properly. Uh, that's very important. You don't want those to go bad. However, the known issues are things that you probably want to know because there's stuff that they didn't fix before Dawn Trail came out. Uh, camera collision with an object at the site of an elite mark battle causes sudden shifts in camera positioning. An issue in customizing or editing face one on a here midlander or tattoos and scars are layered in the opposite order. That's got to be hideous. Issue where in the marks uh, cat's eye and Sally the sweeper appear invisible if using an action that causes movement from great distances. Mark should reappear when you're within close proximity. Okay. An issue where in setting real time reflections to standard or high causes certain elements in trial cutscenes to display incorrectly. Bear that in mind for playing through the story. An issue in dungeons introduced in 7.0 where in the visual indicator for certain boss attacks is smaller than intended. Still there, but not that big a deal. An issue where in the striking dummy for Stone Sky C has the incorrect values for Viper and Pictomancer. So, until this is fixed, don't take your striking dummy stuff too personally. It doesn't say if the HP value is too high or too low. I'm going to assume the answer is too high, but that's just an assumption. Uh, an issue where in players appear invisible after exiting a deep dungeon under certain conditions. That's, that's pretty funny. Uh, please log out of the game and log back in if your character is invisible. An issue when playing as Gunbreaker where the action icon for Natching Fang loses its highlighting after executing Reign of Beasts. Very important if you're somebody playing Gunbreaker uh, because that could very, very visually mess with you with the new skill. An issue where in the depictions of PvE monks, actions, enlightened meditation, in spirited meditation, steel meditation, and forbidden meditation do not indicate they cannot be executed after opening five or more chakras. All right, that's fine. That's just a text issue. An issue where in playing Viper, where in this action, Serpent's Tail cannot change to other... <laughs> that's funny. So, uh, when you have a lot of buffs in Final Fantasy XIV, buffs can't reapply. And because Viper's finisher is a buff... Uh, I'd assume that's where that issue is actually coming from. We've run into this issue in like the Omega Protocol before where because the boss gives you so many debuffs and you yourself are buffing with your teammates, people have lost like defensive buffs to the void and raid damage buffs to the void and things like that. So uh, it seems like Viper has just kind of innately procured that problem by having a status effect for its, its potency buff related thing. So uh, unfortunate with that one. Keep that in mind. An issue when playing as Bardwin, the description of Reign of Death states that its recast timer is shared with Bloodletter even after learning the action. Okay, that's a text-related issue. Uh, the description of the dancer action closed position is incorrect. Erroneously states that it shares the effects of Talana with a dance partner when the correct action is finishing move. Yeah, so the big thing is, is I missed this in my uh, job action when I was going through the job guide. Uh, Talana no longer gives standard steps effect. They just push that over to finishing move. So essentially, the text for this wasn't updated is all that it's saying to reflect what the job actually does now. An issue when playing as White Mage or in heading over... Well, I mean, the issue is you were playing White Mage, but that's different. We're in healing over time potency of the PvE action. Divine Caress is incorrect under certain circumstances, under certain conditions. That's not good. An issue when viewing the gathering log when the gathering location designated for Nopali Flower is incorrect. That's no bueno. 
An issue when using group pose or in changing facial expressions via emotes causes small lip and or eyebrow movements. We're probably going to see some funny screenshots with that. An issue wherein a DualSense wireless controller does not function when connected via Bluetooth while a DualShock 4 controller is connected. So just don't have both connected. An issue with certain graphics cards wherein settings graphics, setting the graphics to maximum or high desktop can cause the night sky to flicker. I wish we knew which graphics cards, but I guess we'll find out. If I had to guess, unfortunately, I'd guess that uh, it's like AMD cards just because, I don't know, 14's kind of... It plays better with AMD than it used to, but it's had its issues in the past, but we'll see. An issue where in lowering the game's resolution while dynamic resolution is enabled causes the game's graphics to appear distorted. That's not good. Oh, it's only on Xbox, though, so that'll affect, like, five people. An issue where in letting the game remain at the title screen for an extended period of time results in a black loading screen that cannot be canceled. That's, uh, okay. Don't, uh, don't just stay on the title screen for no reason then. Um, obviously, that's not going to affect your, like, login queue or anything. It's referring to the, the, the irony that the blinding light starting screen can become nothing but a black loading screen that can't be canceled. I'm assuming that's a loading issue with it going from the launch screen to the trailer and it just, like, messing up. But it's still funny that of all the things that it does, it goes from absolute light to absolute darkness. Uh, so that's it for the important things, the issues that you need to know about going in. But there are some other things that are different here as well. One thing that was missing from the preliminary patch notes was the addition of new materia. Made us wonder if we weren't getting them. But now in the full notes, grade 11 and 12 materia have been added, essentially functioning the same. Grade 12s will be the dominant thing that you'll put in all of your main materia slots and in your first overmelding slot and 11s will be the thing that you put in your overmelding slots almost exclusively i'm sure crafters or gatherers are going to have some very particular material uses they have in the past but that's the general application and of course as a result you'll have a 100 chance of pulling out grade nines and tens this is another normal change that we usually get but these were missing from the preliminaries and are now here in the full notes Next thing that's also combat related is Tenacity receiving a buff. Tenacity's effect on damage dealt, damage received, and HP restored has been increased. Now, here's the thing. I refuse to accept that they would increase Tenacity to a value that was still not good enough to be used. The problem, of course, being that Tenacity has so many effects that it being dominant at any given one of them is a bit tough. Can it always be the most damage dealt increase? No, because realistically, that should be something like determination. And of course, we have crit and direct hit, which usually dominate anyway. Damage received? Damage in Final Fantasy XIV is largely static and predictable. So reducing the damage received is always kind of a question mark about its value. And for that value to be enough here would... It would, would be substantial, but it probably still wouldn't be as important as increasing the damage dealt, which we've already said it probably won't be dominant in. And HP restored, kind of the same deal, you know, H, because damage is so static, healing is generally so static. So that was the issue Tenacity always ran with there as well. Now, there's always the chance they have made a substantial enough change to it. We're going to have to wait and find out, wait, let the people who actually figure this stuff out do all the testing over thousands of test cases. But... I'm not optimistic this will ultimately change the way that melding works for tanks, but never know. So I figure it's worth at least bringing to your attention. And the last thing is some crafting related stuff. Uh, they are removing the actions focus synthesis and focus touch and buffing reflect to from 100% to 300%. Advanced Touch is now also level 68, so it's available 16, uh, 16 levels earlier, which, you know, to those of you at level 90 for Omnicrafters, you don't care. But both Standard Touch and Observe are now combo actions with Advanced Touch, it seems. So, interesting enough to see that. But those are the majority of the changes. There are, of course, updates to the job guide for Disciples of Hand, for Disciples of Land... And, of course, for the actual combat jobs. But because I don't craft or gather, I'm not going to get into the Disciple or Hand and Land ones very much. And I've already done a separate kind of discussion with my chat on both YouTube and Twitch regarding the changes to everything else. So that's going to be its own separate video and is way less structured and formal than I would have liked. It's kind of all over the place, but it's a lot of information to kind of uh, pull apart all at once. A lot of missed things in there, but 
it is what it is, and I'm sure everyone will enjoy picking apart the things that they liked and didn't like all the same. But with that, that's going to be a wrap for going over the most important bits from the full patch notes for 7.0. And tomorrow, we'll be diving deep. I'll be going live a couple of hours before the servers come up. So the servers come up at 2 a.m. Pacific. They will not be up sooner. They could be up later, but they will not be up sooner than that. Uh, and I'll probably be live about 90 to 120 minutes before that in my full Viper outfit, ready to level Viper, even though I won't be raiding on it. Figured, might as well dress. If I'm going to dress as one, might as well play it, even if I'd really rather play Pictomancer instead. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'll see you in Dawn Trail. Until then, take care.